Wow, show starting sound effects. What an amazing production. What a big number. Wow, hello, hi. I did tell you, did you expect it to start like that? No, I don't either, but then I get up here and I never have anything clever planned, so that's what I do. Hello, hi everyone, welcome. Say hi back, it's fine. Hey. There we go, that's fun. Welcome to Comedy from Home Sweet Home. We were here last week. Where the fuck were you? Here. <laughs> no, we had actually we had too many people in here last week. It was a real problem. The fire marshal came out and he said, actually we're not gonna let anyone come out the week after this just to make up for how over capacity you are now. And I said, that's fair, that's a good deal. Thank you, Mr. Fire Marshal. That's not true. Um, Boy, it's been a hell of a week, huh? Wow, what a week. What a week. You seen the news? Wow, a lot of it. Seven days worth, that's what I'd say. A lot of news this week, guys. A lot of news out there. Stuff going on, right? You all seen that stuff that's happening? Man, the things in the news are just... I mean... I miss the way things used to be back before the news, you know? Boy, oh boy, did you see Toby Keith died? Toby Keith died? I didn't even know he was sick. Turns out he had stomach cancer. Okay. I guess I could have looked at this room and figured not a lot of Toby Keith fans. I was now going to sing four minutes of Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue for you, but I, just, I feel like you guys might think I wrote the song. You don't seem to know who Toby Keith is. Oh, man, I remember being a kid growing up listening to Toby Keith. We'd put Toby Keith on and then go beat up a gay guy. It was a classic Toby Keith adventure. It was the 90s. No one had stomach cancer then. That's just what we did. Why did I take that angle with it? I should have just sang the song. That was actually a worse direction to go. I shouldn't have said any of that. I take all that back, I disavow that, uh, bury it with Toby Keith. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm way out of it, because I'm about to, in like five weeks, I'm gonna have another kid. And my life, oh, thanks, guys. The one time I don't expect people to applaud for me having a kid is the one time people actually applaud for me having a kid. I guess people want me to pass on my values of beating up gay people while listening to Toby Keith. Uh, I, uh, about to have a kid, I'm so fried, man, I'm so tired. Uh, comedy is like, it's weird to do comedy because you could check on me, if you popped in on me an hour ago, here's what you would have seen, you would have seen, good night moon, good night stars, good night air, good night noises everywhere. And an hour later I'm like, we used to beat up gay people and listen to Toby Keith. <laughs> It's a weird, that's a weird dichotomy. I'm not used to like, now that I'm a dad, like I just plan to do stuff. I, I don't, I always forget that my wife is involved and she's gonna like invite family members. So this Sunday we went to go have brunch at a, at a farm and the farm also brews cider, but I just went for the brunch. But I'm gonna notice to me, my wife invited my father. So here I am having brunch at a cidery and my father shows up. It's like, this is what you do on the weekends, huh? But I ain't gay. You get drunk off cider. Fuck that. Half an hour later, I'm nine ciders deep. I'm like, man, I'm fucking drunk. I told you I ain't gay. I mean, come on. Wait, just bring me another peach bellini. On ice. Duh. Stupid bitch. That's a cidery joke that I did better the first time I told it. I, uh, my wife is, uh, you know, we're going to have the baby in five weeks. It is, uh, it is it's getting tough for me. It's hard for me. Like, sir, sir over here, have you ever had sex with a woman? Yeah, you like it? It's pretty cool, right? Hey, man, I like it so much, I married a woman, you know what I mean? But, uh, hey, nice. You have any kids? No. All right. Are you? Believe me, you should, okay? I mean, it does actually give you, like, meaning and purpose, but aside from that, you should avoid it. No real benefits. But it's actually, I'm having a hard time lately having sex with my wife. And it's not because I don't think my wife is beautiful. It's not because I don't love my wife or anything. It's just like, have you, so you've had sex with a woman before. Have you ever had sex with a woman before while someone is actively trying to kick you off of her? No, because, no, this is like coming directly. It feels like it's coming from her, but it's not because you know where her legs are. 
This is a good time to remind everyone my wife is very pregnant. It's the baby doing it. I love him, but it seems he's not a big fan of me. You know how that goes, right? Ah, uh, kids and their dads. I, uh, there we go, everybody. That's fun. We actually did. We just went to the doctor. We just got an ultrasound. And uh, my wife is so pregnant now, and the baby's so big. She said, just in my opinion, um, I just, you guys should probably stop having sex until the baby is born. And I said, I would like a second opinion. So I don't like that answer. And she said, okay, here's another opinion. You also shouldn't have sex for at least six weeks after the baby is born. So I really don't like that answer. She said, you'll be so tired with two kids. You won't even want to do it. The fuck kind of sense does that make? Who's ever done eight hours of hard work, got home, was like, ah, man, I'd love a beer, but I'm too fucking tired. I would hate to relax and unwind and enjoy myself. I'm just too tired. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I get shit when I go out to do shows, because I always have like a little note card and I write just like jokes down on it, and sometimes I get shit. People are like, man, you should memorize your jokes, you know, like be professional. Be professional. And it's like, do you know how many fucking dogs that drive construction vehicles that I have to remember? I can't also remember my jokes. You got obstruction crew. You got Paw Patrol. Half the time it's the puppy dog pals are building some shit. And the fucking dogs on Bluey have first and last names. And if I fuck that up, my son and my wife will make fun of me for an entire week. Do you know how hard it is to be a former high school bully and get teased by a two-year-old? Knowing that I can't tell him to shut his fucking mouth? Little bitch, you still shit in your pants. Because that would be rude. And I want to have good memories of me, I guess. Yep, need a better ending for that, too. That's the point of an open mic, everybody. And an eagle will cry and it's gonna rain hell. When you hear Mother Freedom start ringing that bell. All right. I'll, uh, I'll finish with this. I, I'm starting to get like a... I guess as I'm putting on baby weight, I'm starting to get like a little, um, little, little fat here on the side. I'm starting to get a little love handles. And I, I discovered that because I, uh, I went upstairs the other day to take a shower. And I went up and I took my shirt off and I took my pants. I get undressed to shower. I don't know if you do that. But I, I, I get undressed to shower and I looked in the mirror and I had an L-shaped bruise right here. Because I normally have a, a concealed carry pistol, you know? And uh, you can always feel the room shift, the mood in the room shift when I say that. And I just want to make everyone clear. I carry a gun, but it's not, I don't, it doesn't make me feel like a man. I don't want to kill anybody. I just have OCD. And sometimes when I'm out in public and I see a nail sticking out of a plank, I really need to push it back in. But I also don't like to be bothered while I'm working. And if you ever want to be left alone, try bashing a nail back into a park bench with a loaded nine millimeter. People will clear the fuck out and give you some space. All right, I thought that would go better to end, and it didn't. So that's life. I'm a, as a dad now, I'm finished with that. I gotta give out advice, right? I gotta, I gotta give that advice, sir. You'll appreciate this if you ever uh, fuck up and get her pregnant. Uh, by the way, one of these two is that one of these the wives? Is it you over there? Yeah, but you're not gonna let him fuck up, right? Like, nice. All right, good man. You married her, and you know what she wants. Uh, but hey, uh, it's cool. It's cool. But you had to give advice to your kids, you know, grow up when they grow up. You had to give them something like advice that's just like unique to you that they can't get out of a storybook, right? I grew up, I had a dad, and my dad always gave me the best advice where I left the house. He'd say, Jacob, whatever you do, don't commit credit card fraud and don't get anyone pregnant. And I am proud to say that I never committed credit card fraud, even when I really needed $468 fast. Because after six weeks, it's legally a life. Some people don't laugh at that joke, but I'd like to remind everybody that I'm the father of a two-year-old and a 16-year-old ghost, so I do have some leeway to make jokes like that. So I try to think, like, what's the advice I can give that's unique to me? And I think I finally figured it out. I'm going to say one day to both of my sons, I'm going to sit down and say, Son, never 69 with a girl wearing fake eyelashes. Because it is going to feel like a centipede is crawling across your asshole. And I thought that I wouldn't have to worry about that anymore now that I'm married. But unfortunately, I married an Italian girl, so little edges of her mustache do the same thing. All right, everybody.
I brought it all to a standstill from a not running start, but I'm ready to start the show. How about you? Your next comic is so old, he's from a time when people thought I was funny. Put your hands together for Mike Marr. All right, everybody, how's everybody doing? Cameraman, thanks for fixing my tire today. I appreciate it. Yeah, VDOT roadside assistance. You gotta get a, I know, it's hard, it's hard working for the government. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can laugh at that, that's okay. <laughs> Yesterday, I made my name age appropriate. My ache, Mar. I'm a writer, not a fighter. And I got a stubby pencil to prove it. <laughs> yeah. My life is turned upside down since I retired. It's hard to keep it up. I pee, sitting down. I poop, standing up. It feels like eternity to walk up here on stage, yet I come at the speed of light. Yeah, I wanted to create a sarcastic pity party clown character in hopes of going viral. Instead, I smoked a joint and went back and binge watched The Simpsons. Yeah. I'm on a fixed income, and. Uh, when everything else is not, except my dog, it's fixed, it's fixed. <laughs> yeah. I don't work yet, I'm busy all day, fighting with Medicare, insurance companies, the government. So I can make it easier for them to take my money. It's crazy out there, I'm telling you. Um, and I didn't sign up for this. I'm supposed to be retired playing golf and writing jokes and drinking beer. Yeah. I'm hangry all the time. And that's my cure for being grumpy. Is it me, folks? Is it me? Does everybody else have these problems? <coughs> Yeah, listen, I struggled at math. And I do, I do know that three plus three equals a six pack. Step aside, Einstein. I'm back, baby. I'm back. Einstein, Einstein, Einstein. Einstein, Einstein, Einstein. Yeah! There's a new genius in town. Yeah. I, <laughs> I like to think I'm good at math, like Einstein, but I quickly found out I'm better at drinking. In my version of E equals MC squared, Everclear equals me seeing the devil. And suddenly, I'm agnostic. Yeah. My wife says, yeah, way to go, Einstein. You old, fat, balding, limp, dick, vegan, pretending, <laughs> potato chip, eaten, French dip, sharpened sack of smelly toe jam. <laughs> See, that's what 30 years of marriage will do for you. A Pulitzer Prize winning wife. With the creative, with the creative comebacks, yeah. Well, I, I used to have a very serious problem with drinking until I started calling them naps, and then everything became copacetic. My wife's like, "Nope, just pathetic." Yeah. Hey, folks, listen. With geriatric stand-up, fall season is year-round. 
My name is Mike Marr. No, my name is Mike Marr. Thank you. Mike Marr, everybody. I thought the most amazing part of that set is that was a direct quote from his wife. That's, that's all the piece of paper said. It was just that whole thing. Wow. People say we're a stupid show for stupid people, but how many stupid shows have a chant for Einstein right at the top, huh? All right. Bring up your next comic. A very smart lady, everybody. Put your hands together for Leela Yeomans. One of the best things about doing this show is I get to do a lot of people watching. So I'm downstairs talking to Bridget. Bridget gets a big pop. You guys are all laughing. And there's two girls sitting at a table that just go, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck that means? Uh, but we're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Your next performer uh, has not been here for a while. You might know him from the music scene. He recently died of stomach cancer. Everybody put your hands together for Drew Dunbar. <laughs> Hello, friends. <clears throat> Objects in your rearview mirror are closer than they appear. That is a problematic place for an inaccurate mirror. I remember having a foreign exchange student in high school, but I don't remember who we traded for him. Hybo <laughs> seemed cool and all, but his village sounded like it would be really difficult for a white person. And one of us is missing. <laughs> The Pope is pretty old. I'm concerned about it. Like if he dies, who's gonna make sure all the Catholic priests behave? <laughs> Michael Jackson was the king of pop. And like many other kings, he allegedly bent the rules a bit when it comes to children in the bedroom. And I am a singer in a couple of cover bands around and we do some Michael Jackson songs and they hit different after the HBO documentary. I can no longer sing, I want to love you, pretty young thing, the same way. Or why, why? Tell them it's just human nature. Or an actual line that I feel like we all miss for a while. You don't want to be a boy. You want to be a man. So beat it. I have three kids. My kids are all anti-vaxxers. They did not willingly accept any of the vaccines that we ever gave them. They would take their chances with polio before they would bow down to the fascists, like us other sheeple. Hell yeah, That's right, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I could use a minute. That's what I appreciate that. I heard a guy at a bar last year refusing to order a Bud Light because he didn't want people to think that he was, and I quote, a gay liberal. So he ordered a Stella Artois. <laughs> I have a shy bladder, and I don't know why. Am I alone in that? I have a shy bladder, and I don't know why. Something inside me believes that embarrassing information can be gathered by the sound of my pee hitting water. Sometimes I'll go into a stall and just pee onto the side of the toilet bowl to avoid the splash. Because for some reason, it is less embarrassing to let someone believe I just came into a stall to stand there and silently stare, stare at the wall than for them to hear my pee hit the water. <laughs> okay, here's a stupid one. Uh, <laughs> if those weren't stupid enough. This is, uh, the best way to breathe is through your mouth, but you can also breathe through your nose. It's a backup feature, but not a great one. <laughs> Unless your feet are stuck, 
and you are in a puddle that is mustache deep. And it could save your life. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes I see someone who has one old bumper sticker on their car and I think, that is either someone who at some point in their life planned on getting many more bumper stickers, or that is the world's biggest fan of Senior Frog's Bahamas. <laughs> I really thought that was going to be great. I got a classic, which came first for you here. Is a rooster sometimes called a cock because it's got a scrotum hanging from its chin? Or is a penis sometimes called a cock because it's got a waddle hanging from its chin? Think on it. Think on it for a minute. Finger guns. You know about finger guns? It's really the only friendly fake murder greeting. If you walk into a bar and pretend to strangle everyone you make eye contact with, your co-workers are going to stop inviting you to happy hour at the Ramada Inn. Thanks for your time. My name is Drew. Drew Dunbar, everybody. Or as he prefers to be called, Mitch Iceberg. Takes a lot of work to make a heroin addict seem like he was speeding through his set. I think, you know, Drew, what killed us is you can't say, I'm a Michael Jackson impersonator, and then just recite the song lyrics as if you don't know how to do it. Would you like to do a song lyric for us as Michael Jackson? I would really not. We'd really like you to. Wouldn't we, everybody? Wouldn't we like to watch a white guy do Michael Jackson in 2024? Come on, that's only half appropriation. Drew John Barr. No, that's not rolling. Keep it rolling. That's not rolling. And the sound's off, too. Come on. Shimona, come on. We have a... Uh, just say, hey, it's a, it's a great time for Pepsi and we'll light your head on fire. Let's go, let's do it, come on. I'm not a Michael Jackson. All right, that's all right. We knew everything about you wasn't real. Some of these guys come up here and do characters. I don't even have children. Hey, speaking of people who do characters, your next comic has been here for several months lying about what his real name is. I just found out his real name the other day because I was trying to go to the bathroom at a crowded bar. He walks up, he ignores me in the line for about three minutes. Eventually we make eye contact and I go, Chris. He looks at me and goes, mm hmm Doesn't move and then tries to cut in the line. So I pulled him aside and said, Chris, what the fuck did you think means? And he said, oh, I thought you were telling me that Carl Weathers died. <laughs> Your next comic is retarded and a member of our United States Armed Forces. Everybody put your hands together for Private First Class, Chris Joyner. I gave him the chain rank. He's just a regular private, no class at all. Uh. So uh, I've recently this week filled up on gas a couple times and I realized the place that you can still get the cheapest gas is Taco Bell. Uh, I tried Zen pouches but I didn't become peaceful or calm, I just developed a nicotine addiction. There's this ad they used to play on YouTube and this ad would say, would go right into the ad and it would say, and here comes your depression. And I didn't like that because I don't like my depression coming unannounced. So I emailed this company and I said, hey, didn't like your ad because my depression came unannounced and I don't like that. They emailed me back and said, well, if you buy our medication, that won't happen. Touche. My job sent out an email uh, recently for signing up for their 401k and I was like, Jesus Christ, this is gonna be the longest cancer walk I've ever attended. <laughs> They say if you pray to God, he will answer you because he's always listening. So I prayed to God, so I prayed to God to ask him to stop listening because my phone keeps sending me ads for stuff that I don't want. Uh, I never take a shot with a bartender because I know I would just get rejected. 
and I never at, flirted with any women at the gym because I know we would just want to work out. <laughs> My boss asked me if I could relate to him. He said I need to walk a mile in his shoes to feel what it's like to be him. But there's a problem. My boss doesn't have any legs. Uh, my girlfriend asked me, hey, when do I get to meet your dad? And I said, I guess when I do too. <laughs> I walked past a restaurant the other day and a sign, there's a sign on the door that said, sorry for the long wait times, short staffed. And I said, don't apologize to me, maybe you use some of that long wait time to find taller staff if you wouldn't have any issues. <laughs> Uh, I attended a escape room once, and I never really understood escape rooms because I don't have a fire stick at home, and this escape room had a fire stick, so I didn't really want to escape that room. <laughs> if you go into a haunted house, and the first room you walk into and you see a chair move, there's no reason to explore any of that house. You've acknowledged it as haunted. Just leave. So there's a gas station around here called Wawa, and everybody says that they're going to make a Wawa run. And for the longest time, I thought people were just faster than me. Then I realized that they were driving in their cars and I was actually running, doing a wall wall run. <laughs> uh, it's been a horrible month for white people so far. Our favorite creed died, and I don't mean the band. I wish that they would take their own advice and just take that six feet from the edge and just walk a little closer to where it's zero so God can op have <laughs> God can op um, God can welcome them with arms wide open. I'm talking about Carl Weathers. He passed away this month, but he didn't die from an alligator. He died in his sleep peacefully like Epstein. And Toby Keith recently died yesterday or today from stomach cancer. And uh, I guess... He wasn't as good as he once was, but I will have a red solo cup race for him. How much time do I have left? Okay, moving on to a different topic. You can now bet on the Special Olympics. You can now bet one-legged parlays on the one-legged parlays running the race. You can now bet on the three-legged race parlays but the wheelchair race if I'm gonna call anybody to win that race and I'm going in all going in all on uh, Jimmy from Degrassi because I know he'll clean up real well but if I want to bet on the entire thing I know I'm just gonna call Johnny Knoxville because I've seen the ringer 20 times and I know how well he cleaned up in those Olympics uh, Vince McMahon last week was uh, sued for uh, sharing split images from a three-way he had but that other person that was in the three-way was shit on. I feel like that wasn't part of the three-way, and I feel like if I was going to sue Vince McMahon, it would be for that, for shitting on me, when I, that wasn't part of the plan. And that's all I got tonight. <laughs> Keep it going for Chris Joyner. You can read the rest of his set at Chris Sipple underscore USMC. We're just trying to get Chris as much trouble as possible. Uh, Chris and I went out drinking the other day. Uh, it was me, him, and Brian Fontaine and Ben Pierce. So thank God Brian Fontaine was there. Uh, no, this is the first night Chris's girlfriend isn't here, so I can make fun of him without being afraid she's going to beat me up. Uh, no, she's a nice lady. If, if this gets back to her, you're a nice lady. And we all salute you for taking care of Chris. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this. This is real. They just, uh, did you know they're doing like an enhanced Olympics? They're doing it for like everyone on steroids with gene editing and like doped up blood. It's the enhanced Olympics. Peter Thiel's behind it. They're doing it in, uh, I think, Qatar uh, at the same time as the Olympics that are coming up. The first commercial starts off with a guy saying, it's a voiceover, and he says, I'm the fastest runner in the world. I beat Usain Bolt's record easy. And then it pans up and it's a white guy. And he says, but you don't know who I am. And the Olympics hates me. So you guys haven't seen it? <laughs> it's 
So uh, sometimes you just make eye contact with folks and you go, don't do that. Just stop where you are. Uh, your next comedian coming to the stage. This guy is a big fan of this show. He's such a big fan. He signs up every single time we have this show. Doesn't always come out, but always signs up. And you gotta appreciate that, because it is the thought that counts. Everybody, put your hands together for the legend, Big Scotty. And I think we should start calling him Kevin Smart, because his jokes make you think. I and a little guy comes in and goes, hey, these are some thoughts I had. They're coming quick, lightning quick, lightning quick. <laughs> Lettuce is good in salads, okay? All right, everybody, big Scotty. Uh, all right, your next comedian is the sort of old dude who's been hanging around the scene so long that he's got a napkin this long with endings to Big Scotty's jokes to hand off. Put your hands together for comedy coach Carlton K. Jacob, don't lump me in with him, come on. No. <laughs> I do have a tag for you afterwards though. Um, what's going on everybody? Uh, He's not wrong, I'm gonna do some one-liners too, so we're, we're, we're in this concept of trying to get down to the bare bones of shit, so here we go. Uh, it looks like King Charles has got cancer, uh, and this whole time I thought he was just gonna die from all the inbreeding, like the dogs, all right. <laughs> I still haven't received any of my W-2s for all the self-checkouts I did this year, but that's fair, because I stole from every single one of them, so. <laughs> I did get those, yes. I think I'm one of only three people that did. Um, my wife told me that she hates when I do dry January, because she wants me to at least spit on it first. <laughs> I refer to my first wife as my starter wife, but I probably shouldn't have done it while we were married. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the first time I did drugs was like the first time I wandered into a male strip club. Uh, it cost a lot of money. I felt stupid doing it, and the way that it affected my dick was weird. First time I did drugs. All right, never mind. <laughs> it was like the, okay. I'll work on that one. Uh, my ex didn't allow me to have uh, even partial visitation of the twins, uh, or even, fuck, how did I, or even supervised visitation, shut up, uh, which is bullshit because I paid for those tits fair and square. Uh, all right. <laughs> I support sex workers because sex work is work. Am I right? But in any of the jobs I've ever had, I didn't have to worry about people coming on me, so... <laughs> Sammy did. <laughs> Actually, I thought I was going to be the best dressed one here tonight with a button down. You look like you're getting ready to sell Roth IRAs to people. Um, let's see. The problem with motorboating an old lady with huge tits is that you run the risk of hitting your life alert button. Mike, back me up on this. Uh, and you also then have to tuck them back into her waistband when you're done. Uh, <laughs> when I tell somebody they're being extra, I don't think they realize I mean chromosomes. All right, he can say retard, but I can't hint at it. All right, understood. <laughs> uh, the lady that schedules my doctor's appointments has a sign on her desk that ironically says, live in the moment. They say the early bird catches the worm. The only worm I'm interested in catching is in tequila, and if I drink it early, I'm considered an alcoholic. So, <laughs> fuck Hell that yeah. one too, all right. I do say, if I get divorced again, which is probably likely, because I spend a lot of time with you fuckers, uh, if I get divorced again, I'm gonna probably go after a woman that's like the tequila I like, because uh, I'll like her Mexican and with my worm in the bottom. No? All right, fuck that one. That's good, that's good. I tried, I tried. Uh, 
Like sex in the butt. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. I'm glad you backed me up on that. Uh, <laughs> the Catholic Church asked me uh, to find a new religion because I just kept going to confessional and bragging. Right. I literally feel like I'm doing a Big Scotty impression by doing this every fucking time. <laughs> I accidentally discovered a new type of porn when I typed an F instead of an M because fidget porn is apparently a really big thing and it's wonderful. Right. <laughs> I told my dad that MILF meant mama is looking fine. Uh, so he started saying that to all the ladies at the uh, retirement community. He's been asked to leave. They've, they've moved him out. I, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a grower, not a shower. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I joined the Grow Bros Facebook group. Uh, and I sent what I thought was a normal amount of dick pics in, uh, but I was asked to leave what turned out to be a gardening group. Um, <laughs> Grow Bros. Yeah, call back to that. All right. Uh, all right, I got two more. Uh, I think, I bet the percentage of men with DUIs and women with IUDs are about the same because they both somehow got accidentally smashed. <laughs> and I think we can stop a lot of people from vaping in public if collectively every time we see one we just go, VAPIST! I got one more then. Uh, when I get home tonight, my wife is gonna complain. I'd rather she came fancy with like a British accent or something, but all right. Guys, that's my time on Carlton K. As good a response as that. Hey everybody, keep it going for Carlton K. I can't believe you guys didn't laugh at his tequila joke. I love that joke. And like I told Carlton last time he did that joke, I agree with him. I also like my women like I like my tequila, Blanco, and 1700. <laughs> All right. Your next comedian also likes his women 17. Put your hands together for Pete Gronseth. I also used to fuck around with the Four Loco. I remember one time a girl and I were having sex behind a dumpster at Nara Sushi drinking Four Loco and she threw up in my mouth and I swallowed it and later on she told me about it and went, tasted better than watermelon. <laughs> you had to be alive in 2009, I guess. All right, everybody, let's keep this thing moving. Your next comedian was not alive in 2009. She's a young lady, a very young lady, in fact, she looks up to Holly Bumfall and says, I wish I could grow up to be like you. Everybody put your hands together for Grace Moyer! How's it going, everybody? Uh, the Grammys were the other night. Um, they were really upsetting for me because I wanted Lana Del Rey to win. You know, because she deserves it, but also selfishly, because I thought if she won a Grammy, it could make her mainstream enough for me to make jokes about her. You know, because she's like right on the edge of being too niche. So if there's any old and or straight people here who aren't already familiar, Lana Del Rey is the icon, legend, and genius responsible for songs like Born to Die and Grandfather, Please Stand on the Shoulders of My Father While He's Deep Sea Fishing. That's a real one. As well as lyrics like My Pussy Tastes Like Pepsi Cola. And not only am I a huge fan, but I'm also coincidentally exactly what it would look like if someone tried to draw her from memory. I'm like her version of whatever replaced Avril Lavigne. My pussy tastes like Diet Coke. I'm basically Lana Del Rey if Instead of writing songs about being depressed and sleeping with terrible men, 
she wrote jokes about having ADHD and sleeping with terrible men. <laughs> Side note, I came up with the phrase, my pussy tastes like Diet Coke, like two or three years ago when I was very drunk, smoking a joint in the back of a Mini Cooper, headed deep, deep into the woods with my best friend and two random brothers we met at a bar that night. But I just figured out how to make it work on stage last night. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, I have a question. How do you guys feel about virtual appointments? Personally, I think they've gone a little too far. Okay, like, you know, they're great for some stuff. I love going to therapy in bed. But I gotta draw the line at virtual gynecologists. Cause like, what does that mean? You know, how does that work? Am I just supposed to describe it to them? And they have to take my word for it? Or am I expected to show whole on camera? But I'm paying them? Something smelling a little fishy. Uh, speaking of pussy, you guys like eating pussy? There's a little too much hesitation there. Fucking misogynist. Anyways. I remember the first time I ate pussy, I really wasn't that nervous because I had already slept with enough men to have a very thorough understanding of all of the do's and the don'ts of eating pussy. You know, I think the worst head of my life was a couple months ago. In retrospect, I probably knew it was going to be bad because the kissing was really bad. You know, he kept like bumping his teeth against my teeth. But I still let him go down on me because uh, offering to eat my pussy is like offering me free weed. I'm not gonna turn that down. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, but, <laughs> but as I should have predicted, it was a similar issue down there. You know, I, I could feel his teeth like bumping scraping. I was like, how the fuck am I complaining about Toothy Head as a girl? I didn't think that was possible. It felt like, have you guys ever seen those videos where a man will do like a period pain simulator? And he's always like, oh my god, I had no idea how much pain you guys have to endure. I understand the plight of women, and I'm going to respect you now. Uh, yeah, that was me. I got one toothy blowjob, and now I'm a men's rights activist. Uh, not really, though, but I do want you guys to know that I'm also not a feminist. Okay, I hate the misconception that feminists are all angry, gay, man-haters. Because really, they're just people who believe in equality. And I am an angry, gay, man-hater. That's my time. I'm Grace Moyer. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Grace Moyer, everybody. An anti-feminist men's right activist. Now, Grace, if you just give Silver $10, he'll cut that video out for you. Put that online. You'll have 10,000 subs on YouTube before you even put up your first video. You'll be rich. You could be the white Candace Owens. That sounds dumb, but it's actually really good business advice. If you'd like a retirement account, do that. All right. Your next comedian is actually Candace Owens' husband. Everybody put your hands together for Mr. Owens himself, Devon Simmons. He has a gun in his home. Just so now we all know, he has a gun in his home. This is a true story. One time uh, there was an incident in our neighborhood, a guy was killed and then uh, the police came, but the guy who shot him was just in the woods behind our house. And uh, my wife sent me out uh, to go like talk to the cops and figure out what was going on. 
she went out to the upstairs window and got my rifle. And it was like watching from the windows for whoever just killed a guy who was in the woods behind our house. And I was so proud of her. Until I came back inside and took the rifle from her, and there were two bullets sticking out of the ejection slot, just jammed together. I was like, that's... I don't know how you do that. I've been shooting guns since I was 13. I don't know how the fuck that happens. She's got a PhD. She's smart. Uh, your next comedian is so excited. He wrote 11 minutes on how Toby Keith died of stomach cancer, but all the jokes have already been done. So tonight, here to do a completely improvised set, everybody, off the top of the dome, the toothy, toothy girl dome, it's my man, Tyler Bauer. Addressing the elephant trunk in the room. Who here saw Drake's penis today? Hell yeah! Y'all aren't aware? Drake's penis is leaked! Drake's penis is real! <laughs> and they don't have no award for that. A lot of people hate Drake for a lot of reasons. They say he's overrated. They say he's a pedophile. They say he's light-skinned. But he's got a hog, home sweet hog! Who's also the wheelchair kid on Degrassi? Turns out he wasn't in a wheelchair for being shot. It's because he had to drag that hammer around with him. 21, can you do something for me? <laughs> His dick is like one of those snakes in a can breaks. It never ends. <laughs> that trick, he's crazy. It is wild though, I don't know, nobody up here has seen the video. I know people downstairs have seen it. But in the leaked video of Drake's penis, <laughs> it's a video he sent to a girl, by the way. He sent a <laughs> he sent a dick vid to a girl. He is spread eagle on a hotel bed, stroking that hog. Thighs looking like Swiss Miss hot chocolate. <laughs> Oh, trophies. <laughs> His dick is the size of a trophy. And not a little league trophy, I mean like a winning the bowling league trophy, home sweet home. There you go. Also, Toby Keith died today. <laughs> Completely overshadowed by Drake's penis. Not just because it's big. Toby Keith is in heaven right now screaming the N word. <laughs> Stomach cancer. Toby Keith died of stomach cancer. Should have got a colonoscopy. He's definitely not as good as he once was. Red Solo Cup. Drake's penis is bigger than a Red Solo Cup. Hope we know. Oh, dude, I'm, I spent so much time looking for the video of Drake's penis. I spent a lot of time. My girlfriend was very weirded out by it, but I think it was worth it for that minute and a half there. If you want to see it, I'll show you outside after the show. Moving on. Segway. Drake's dick's bigger than a Segway. Oops, all berries, home sweet home. Oops, all berries. Fuck, oops, all berries. Yeah, fuck it. Oops, all berries is bullshit. You can't tell me they make 
made that much of a mistake. People get fired for a mistake like that. Oops, all berries, suck my dick. That is half the size of Drake's dick. Being generous. Probably more like a, like a, it's a fraction. Um, the modern day version of Oops All Berries, though, is buying cocaine and uh, it's Oops All Fentanyl! <laughs> I got one minute left here. Let's get a good one that's not about Drake's penis. All right. How did we not know that Subway Jared was a pedophile? <laughs> How did we not know he has pedophile lips? He looks like a skinwalker. That Subway Jared. I was honestly more upset about the subs not actually being a foot long. You remember that lawsuit? Subway got sued for the subs not actually being a foot long. Some asshole brought a fucking ruler into Subway. It was like, these aren't actually a foot. He was a size queen. <laughs> Jared's penis was also not a foot long, unlike Drake's. That's why the kid tattled. The kid was a size queen. <laughs> That's fucked up, guys. Y'all are fucked up. I, Silver has this filmed. Turn the camera on all these people laughing at that Subway Jared joke. Grace Moyer. <laughs> Wherever Grace Moyer works, get her fired. <laughs> I don't have a job. Hey, all right, let's go. I've been Tyler Bauer. Y'all been a lovely crowd. If you want to see Drake's penis, talk to me outside. I'll be smoking cigarettes. Love you and bring back your host, Jacob McFadden. Goodbye. <laughs>
You know what? You know what? Have you, uh, have you guys uh, seen these new ads for phones? They're always talking about, hey, this camera resolution is so much better. You're going to look so much better with this camera. And I'm like, hey, you fat hag, you're never going to look better. I'm going to let that sit. Look, hey, look. It's tough to follow Drake's cock. I don't know. I had a joke about it, but Tyler did so many. So I don't really know if I would... Yeah, it won't. It won't. I read it. I just read it just now. It's not going to work. I got one for you. It's like uh, in Dragon Ball Z when Goku has to run across... Dude, I've never watched that shit. I played outside in the street. My parents made me play in the street. No laughs. I get it. Here's one thing I do have to say. I have something to say about, uh, look, listen to this real quick. Hold on, hold on, let me look through my notes. I, um, I got pulled over. Three separate times while I was drunk and um, I got away with it. And it's not be, it's because of my white privilege. But not my skin white privilege, because of my cocaine, and my white privilege, my nose white privilege. I did some blow, and they let me off. They had no idea. Now, listen. All this stuff, did you hear about that guy that died around here uh, that did some blow? He died. Nobody knows him, though. It's a, it's a friend's brother's brother's brother. Whatever. Listen, people have been giving me... Me, personally, test strips for cocaine for some reason. I don't understand why. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't believe in cocaine uh, drug test strips because I got two test strips right here. Listen, I'm not going to waste my fucking coke on a piece of plastic, okay? That's not even going to get high from it, all right? Listen to me. People have asked me, they say, hey, look, hey, if you've never done cocaine before, I like to say, don't ever do it. You know, most people say, hey, if you've never done coke, don't ever do it. I say, yeah, don't ever do it. Why would you ever try to reach your full potential? That's a dumb idea, you know? Um, but as far as uh, coke goes, I don't know, you know? I'm actually kind of... Uh, I'm kind of fucked, honestly, to, to be honest with you guys. Can I be honest with the crowd yeah. of comedians? I've been up for 36 hours. Um, this is a nightmare, honestly. I actually had this dream two nights ago, and this is exactly what happened. I didn't get a single laugh, and I quit comedy right after, so... I'm trying to figure out how to not quit comedy, and to be honest with you, actually, that's not even true. I'm honestly, all I'm thinking about is going back downstairs and doing more shots. So, uh, you guys have been pretty cool, I guess. Uh, you sort of laughed at me a couple times. Um, it was pretty tough to follow Tyler. So, uh, so no, no, he's fine. No, don't fucking shit on him. He did good. No! Stop it! Stop. He did great. And it's my fault. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. I've been Zach Carpenter. I'm sorry that I was so much worse than the last guy. Zach Carpenter, everybody. Suffering a little Drake's penis envy with Tyler Bauer, I guess. You know, the worst part for Zach is that Tyler was actually the last person on the show, and I asked him if he wanted to go earlier, and he chose to bump Zach and really fuck him over like that, so... That's something. I have to, uh, it's just come to my attention, guys. I had to point this out. Sammy Tamimi, who will be on the show... Silver, get a shot of Sammy, if you don't mind. Sammy Tamimi, who will be on the show later tonight... 
definitely looks like he's not here to do comedy. He looks like he's here to do slam poetry. So I just wanted to fuck Sammy over. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, <clears throat> Palestine, child of mine, died today, tears I cry. 67 borders, Zionist hoarders. Who am I? Free Palestine. Sammy to me and everybody. I want to buy insurance for you. Just kidding, Sammy hates Jews. All right, everybody, let's keep this show moving. Your next comic coming to the stage. It's like the energy of Zach Carpenter, but the socioeconomic background of Tyler Bauer. Put your hands together for Chris Lippa. Thank you, Jacob. He knows how to introduce me so well. How's it going, y'all? Oh, some new stuff. I quit smoking weed. I quit smoking weed before I go to grocery stores because I noticed I was wasting a lot of time in the deli. Way too much time in the deli. Way too much time getting free samples of all the different lunch meats. No. Now I go to the grocery store. And I don't like how grocery stores are getting so modern. Every time I go, I have to check out myself, but it's cool that they give me a free bag of chips for doing it. <laughs> kind of trending song called similar. Tax that one. And now they're throwing a steak. It's pretty cool until the scale snitches on me. Damn that scale. Leaving the grocery store, walking out the grocery store, I saw a van in the parking lot with, uh, with the words whore keyed in the side. So I made sure to leave my number on the windshield. I respect the links that they go for advertising. I respect the hustle. Later on, I got a call saying, hi, I found your number on my windshield. Do you do body work? I said, no, I thought you did. That's why I left the number. <laughs> no, she goes, do you do body work or paint jobs? I said, yes, but what's in it for me? I usually don't do toilet humor. Uh, I usually don't do toilet humor, but I got some really good shit. The phrase "I got some really good shit" is Vince McMahon's favorite pickup line, apparently. <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny. They said Vince McMahon has numerous sex toys named after wrestlers. I wonder what they might have been. I wonder what they were. You got Andre the Giant, the ultimate warrior, of course. <laughs> Legion of Doom, Akeem, the African Dream. Oh, yeah. Wrestling fans, anybody? <laughs> it keeps going. Dork the Clown, Junkyard Dog, The Oddities, Mean Gene, Mr. Wonderful, China. I don't know. Leave it up to the imagination. One can only imagine. I tried some impossible meat. They call it impossible meat because it's impossible to enjoy. I found that out. It's impossible to finish. Speaking of impossible to enjoy, Billy Joel put out his first song in 17 years. It's called Turn the Lights Back On, and all I could think about while, hear it, while hearing it is turn the mic back off. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, though. It was better than Cher's Christmas album. I don't know if anybody, if anybody heard Cher's Christmas album, but it's pretty much Do You Believe in Love After Love just with Christmas songs. It's the exact same everything. Beat, notes, Chord, progression, everything. Killer Mike was arrested at the Grammys for battery. The police haven't released any further info, but say, quote, given the assailant's name, it sounds like the victim got off easy. <laughs> yeah. Disney fired Jonathan Majors after he was found guilty after assault on, on his... Disney fired... Jonathan Majors, after he was fine, found guilty after assault on his ex-girlfriend. Ugh, I turned that side up. Jonathan Majors played a character known as He Who Remains in the Marvel Universe, and he'll now go on to play He Who Remains Unemployed in the real one. <laughs> Pete Diddy is in the, in the news, and I finally get that his name, Diddy, stands for Diddy Do It. Did he rape her? Did he assault her? And the P stands for probably. He probably did it all. It's not hard to imagine. Bad boy, baby. I, know. <laughs> I, need, I need Tyler's energy. God, I need Tyler's energy. But, it really, Diddy's whole situation really puts, I need a girl 
into a whole different context of my favorite songs. Speaking of I Need a Girl, I Need a Girl, now that they closed my favorite Chinese massage parlor. Thanks a lot, feds. Now I have to find a girlfriend and a massage parlor. Making it real rough for me out here. This sucks. Had to log back on my social media and realize that all my old hot crushers are now weird shaped mothers. So I have to go find some new fish in the sea. Went to the club and left with nothing but a splinter from the glory hole. That's all I left with. Very painful. Very brutal. But I still haven't given up. I hope to have a love story so good I can call in and light 98 radio and impress Delilah. <laughs> Hear that warm, comforting voice of her. That's all I need. Uh, uh, yeah, that's my time. I'm bringing host Jacob back up. Thank you very much. Now, everybody, rushing off the stage, that's Chris Lippa, everybody. Chris Lippa, right here. You're listening to comedy from Home Sweet Home with me, your host, Delilah, right here on 98.1. Okay. You gotta give it up to Chris Lippa, everybody. He's trying to find his new thing. Chris Lippa was a big deal back in the early aughts in Richmond when he invented the fixie bicycle, and now he's all grown up. And uh, really, just to go from the top to the bottom, it's, it's a big fall. Uh, but especially we don't have tears, you know. All right, let's keep the thing moving. Your next, your next comedian is actually the progeny of Chris Lippa. He is the son of the Fixie Bicycle, everybody. He's the Jack Carpenter, the Jack Parker. He's the Jack Parker without gasoline. Put your hands together for Will Miner. He doesn't like cops, he says. Looking like the most obvious undercover cop anyone's ever seen before. Boy, don't you guys hate rules and regulations? Me too. Boy, I really hate state code 163.1 subsection C. That one's the worst, huh? Jeez. Ever since the Attorney General ruled that it can be prosecuted and you can be searched without a warrant, I hate it even more. Do you have any coke? Nah, just kidding. Will doesn't do coke. You didn't record that, did you, Silver? Because Will doesn't do coke. Will does coke. Um, all right, we're going to keep the same mood. Your next comedian, everyone knows him as the guy who runs Revelé up the street. But I know him as the guy who spent 10 minutes trying to convince me that Saddam Hussein was an attractive man before the show began. <laughs> what sort of shit he's into, but I don't like my men pulled out of spider holes covered in their own urine and feces. I like them proudly ruling a shittiest government. But that's just me. Sammy Tamimi. Uh, real story, actually, Saddam Hussein did want to have my dad killed, but I still think he's a good-looking man. Um, uh, we have Black History Month, which is cool, so uh, in honor of Black History Month, I started smoking Newports. Yeah, that's cool, that's a good joke. Uh, thank you, Jacob, for the poetry on uh, the Palestine. I don't actually hate Jews, but I feel like after that poem, I should. I, um... <laughs> I love Jews, man. I actually shaved my beard and people think I look Jewish, so now I'm just like much more of a successful person. Uh, yeah. uh, as a comedian, you know, I feel like uh, you really shouldn't talk about Israel and Palestine because uh, the truth is uh, you're either pro-Palestine uh, or you want to get booked in comedy clubs. So, uh, that's, a, that's a true statement. <laughs> Which is why I never get booked in comedy clubs. Um, not because I'm like pro-Palestine, just because I'm not a good comedian. That's a good joke. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. I'm so glad my dad's here. I, uh, I, uh, when I moved to America, I moved to like a very small town called uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia. It's a beautiful Mennonite town. Uh, it's a beautiful town. I was there recently. 
And uh, there's a lot of farms there. People there are so friendly. There's a person who invited me to their farm, and he goes, I grow this uh, really special fruit uh, called uh, dingleberry. Uh, you should try it. And I ate it. And uh, I didn't know you guys ate dingleberries in Virginia. I think that's weird. That could have been better. Um, when I moved here, I lived uh, with a host family. Um, you know, I remember when I first arrived at their house, I dropped my bags and walked into the living room. And uh, right in front of me was this like ginormous painting of Robert E. Lee, uh, your supreme leader. And, uh, and uh, I was 18 years old, I had no idea who Lee was, so I just started praying to the Robert E. Lee statue. And uh, they really appreciated it. They started praying too. I understand, like, they're racist, but at least they're Muslim now, which is great. It's good to have Muslim racists. Uh, I love my host family, even though they're racist, you know. They, uh, I, I really don't like their dinner parties, though, because every time, man, they introduce me like a token brown kid. Like, this one's got papers, not like those other ones. Which is true, I do have papers, that's kind of like a, like a big immigrant flex, you know? Like when I tell a lady, like, I have papers, she goes, oh, thank God. Now we can talk. Then I roll my window down, give her a 250, and she gets in my car. Because <laughs> she's a prostitute. Yes. Um, I remember during one of these uh, dinner parties, you know, this uh, guy busts out a jar of homemade ketchup, you know. And that's when the party started getting real excited and stuff, you know, exciting. And so the guy sees me staring uh, at the jar of homemade ketchup and I catch him staring at me, so he walks up to me, he's really excited and goes, so Sammy, uh, ketchup, do you guys uh, have that in your country? I go, no Dillard, we dip our food in olive oil and sand. Of course I know what ketchup is, you know. Ketchup is what comes out of a person after an explosion. I promise you that was really good. Uh, I'll tell you guys actually a fun story. I, uh, see, I, I used to be a fat kid, uh, like most of you. And uh, I, I grew up, I grew up, and I'm thin, I'm happier, you know, I'm happier. So now I just like really hate fat kids, you know. And I, I remember I was in Baghdad, uh, Iraq, uh, not Alabama. Uh, thank you. I was in Baghdad, Iraq, and I was in our neighborhood visiting. And there was, uh, there was this, uh, there's this really fat kid in this neighborhood. And he's the, he's the type of fat you want to punch, you know? Because he's like a bully. And uh, anyway, that kid gets kidnapped, uh, which is not funny at all. And because um, he's a child of God. And he's, uh, that kid gets kidnapped, and it's, it actually is a tragic story because his family had to collect like $200,000 for ransom. And I remember when he came back, there was a big celebration for this kid. Everybody was happy. The kid was running around the neighborhood, and, uh, and I really wanted to kidnap that kid again. I don't know how to end that joke, but I just really want to kidnap a fat fucker. <laughs> how do you end a joke where you want to kidnap a fat child? Um, <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much, everybody. Give it up for your host, Jacob and Fed. Yeah. Keep it going for Sammy to Mimi, everybody. And make sure you listen to his Valuetainment podcast, everybody. Uh, yes, thank you. There's uh, two, two online people. Uh, say, I, Sammy, you mentioned dingleberries during your set. I don't know if you know this. But I learned what a dingleberry was when I was eight, and it's a little piece of shit that gets caught in your ass hair and hangs there like a berry. Which, between eight and 11, I was so convinced was a real thing, oh, I use that term all the time. And now, 22 years later, I'm like, you know what, they fucking lied to me. I've had ass hair for 22 years, and never once have I been like, oh shit, blackberry jam. It's never happened. Sammy, do you have dingleberries? Do you have a lot? All right, let me compare and contrast. Hey, Grace, do you have any dingleberries? I don't know what that means. Everyone, but you know what? Everyone believes that. 
Anyways, your next comedian coming to the stage. I usually say he's from New York, but I think he said like eight times now he's not from New York. So I'll go ahead and say this. Your next comedian was Mike Mars head tutor back in high school. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a, a, an aged, wizened man who uses a lot of lotion and conditioner. Put your hands together for Bo Arbazan, everybody. I didn't even know he was gay. I just thought he was Lutheran. I have to agree with you, though. In the bathroom, you got to be quiet. This is a true story. The only write-up I have at work. My wife and I used to work at the same company. A senior vice president of the company came to visit our building. I was at the urinal. He came and said, hey, how you doing? I said, nah. He went, uh, what? And I went, nah, you don't do that. You stay quiet in the bathroom. And he's like, oh, I'm just trying to be friendly. And I was like, nah, not in the urinal. Don't do that. And when I met with our HR person, because he complained, by the way. He's a fucking publicly traded company. He went to HR. He's like, some guy in the bathroom said, nah. When he complained, I went to the HR lady and she was like, Gabe, we got a form. We have to. <laughs> and then they told my wife about it. And she was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And it's like, I didn't know who he was. It was just some old guy in the bathroom. She was like, be friendlier. So I guess my wife wants me to be gay. Don't know how that's gonna raise our new son. Oh, gay people make more money. Okay, well maybe they figured it out. Uh, all right, we're down to our final two comics, everybody. Are you ready for your penultimate performer of the night? The performer who was handpicked by our headliner this evening. He said, I know exactly who can warm them up for me. The guy who gets the room soft for me to come in and just fuck them until they're solid again. Your next comedian is the ultimate fluffer in the Richmond scene, everybody. Put your hands together for the pelican of Richmond comedy. That's, uh, it's alluding to testicles. Uh, this next comedian, um, he can swallow testicles and fly 30 miles. Um, here's some more pelican facts. There you have white feathers. Uh, your next comedian has white feathers. Everybody put your hands together for Big Beak with a big reservoir on it. Chuck! Home sweet home, come on, we're still here, there's five of us, come on, give it up for Jacob, come on, Jacob, or as I like to call him, Republican Robin Williams, uh, the only time I've seen Jacob actually mad at me is I called him a Republican one time, and he was like, he really demanded, he's like, no, I'm libertarian, he like actually got mad at me, I'm like, okay, fine, you're not Republican, you just vote Republican, all right, uh, <laughs> It's, all right. Uh, but that isn't true. <laughs> okay, okay. See, it's still bad. I shouldn't have brought it up. I'm going to get a talking to after my set. Uh, we have uh, polyamorous people here. Will? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, anyways, uh, I don't know. Like, I, 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 and, uh, you know, I have nothing against polyamorous people. But uh, I just don't understand it. Like, I don't understand the appeal. Like, I don't understand the appeal of, like, getting into a relationship with someone. It's like all that hard work. You get to know someone. You have someone who understands you in every way. And then you're like, you know what this relationship really needs? First dates. Uh, you know what could really spice this up? If I could spend hours with strangers finding out I have nothing in common with them. Uh, all right. That's fine, guys. Uh, now, I'm in a relationship. I'm in a, an interracial relationship. Uh, it's uh, it's mostly normal, but like sometimes we, I, we, there's just like some cultural things like will come up from like our childhoods, and it's like I've realized like, th and this is a big thing. I don't think anyone's ever said this before, but white people and black people are living in two different Americas. Uh, <laughs> I'm the first one to say it. Uh, <laughs> but I I just mean more like in a pop culture way. Like I just learned like. I just learned who this guy Morris Chestnut is. Like, I never heard of this guy Morris Chestnut, but he's very important to, like, middle-aged black women. Uh, they all want to fuck him. That's okay, you're all white, so... <laughs> you don't know. But also, a big, thing, a big thing that happens is, like, a lot of times, me and my girlfriend, will be out at, like, a restaurant or something, and we're, we'll hear music on, and one of us will be like, oh, I know this song, like, my parents used to play it when I was a kid. And, like, 
the music she knows, I'm like, I've never heard this before in my life. And it'll be something like Sade, like Bobby Caldwell or something. Uh, then I'll hear something on the radio, I'll be like, oh, I listen to, my parents played this all the time when I was a kid. It'll be like Crazy Train. <laughs> I don't know, I think that says something about white people, that that's like white people music is like, we really fetishize insanity, right? <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, we love, like, we can't get on a regular train. We need a crazy train. <laughs> Like mo most uh, train engineers, they'd be upset if their train went off the rails. Not Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> He's excited. <laughs> That's how sick we are. White people, we're really, we love just sick things. Like that, the Joker movie, it's like, yeah, we're like, that's our, all, every white person's favorite movie. It's like, yeah, I like clowns. Deadly clowns that kill. <laughs> that's my world. Uh, Ugh, I don't know. All right. Uh, I'll never say it again. That's fine, guys. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I. Uh, this is, but this is a this is a white song. This is a this is what I call a white dad classic. Do you guys know this song, Werewolves of London? That's like. Yeah. Yeah. See, you had a white dad, so you know Werewolves of London. Uh, it, if you don't know, it's a very silly song, right? It's just a list. Thank you. Bananas and Blow. You like that song? I like Blow. I don't know. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry. That's my mistake to do crowd work with uh, <laughs> Zoinked Out Zach. Uh, I don't know. I know. Well, that's fine. Tyler showed me that, that video of Drake beforehand. And his, his penis was huge, but I didn't want to say anything, because I was like, maybe I'll say it's big, and Tyler was like, you think it's big? I was... <laughs> That's like the thing, when you're with your friend looking at a dick, you can never say it's big, because you don't know what your friend's going to say. Like... <laughs> you just got to sit there and be like, Look, see what he's thinking, but then you make eye contact with him while you're looking at a cock swinging around. That's weird. I don't... You asked for it. Hey, I did. I gave him consent for the big cock. All right, guys. What did we learn? I totally lost my place. Uh, I feel bad because I, I said this to Devon when Carlton was up here. Carlton started a joke. I didn't even hear his punchline because I wrote a better punchline. But he started a joke where he was like, uh, he was like, oh, I was looking at uh, porn recently and I saw this new weird type of porn. And this is what he should have said at the end. He's like, did you know they're making it with adults now? <laughs> All right, my, my name's Charlie Berg. Thank you very much. I, I guess it's just me, because you guys liked it, but I didn't like that joke at the end. That implies that child porn is acceptable. Boo, boo to Big Chuck. Yeah, boo, Big Chuck, he likes kitty porn. Boo. Also, I'd like to correct, uh, I would like to correct something that Big Chuck said. I'm not a Republican, okay? I would sue him for defamation if I believed in defamation law or the court system. Now, I do agree with Republicans on everything, except I think they don't go far enough. But I just like being a contrarian, so I'm libertarian. Nothing makes me feel better than telling other autistic people they're not autistic enough. All right, we're now down to our headliner tonight, guys. And we've been talking, we've been talking tonight about Republican, Democrat, red team, blue team, gold team, that's a libertarian color. We've been talking about all the colors, all the major party colors that we know about. But your next comic isn't concerned about United States domestic policy because he snuck over the border illegally. Your next comedian coming to the stage is not Mexican. Like my brothers in the GOP say, he's one of 63% of people coming over the border from Central Africa. Your next comedian coming to the stage is tonight's headliner. He is, by the way, what is your name? Sin? Sid, okay, that's much better, by the way. Just so you know, Sin, not good. Sid, great. Uh, I'm a Catholic, I'm against it. Uh, 
You've been great. Thank you for sticking around the whole show, but you're in for a treat now. Your next comic literally has to pay a 45% tariff to get into this country. Uh, he is a great performer. He's our headliner tonight. He usually headlines elsewhere. But he's here tonight. And he's here to rock your socks off. And just so you know, are you a citizen of America? You're just as tight. Everybody, put your hands together for tonight's headliner, Louis Carroll! Uh, just to prove I'm not Mexican, I'm black. Um, Carlton was here uh, a few minutes ago, and he was like, um, uh, why were you late? Uh, is it cause, uh, you know, you're black? And I was like, mmm, mmm. If only Devon was here, yeah. Would have rocked your ass. I, I, I'm not gonna do anything, but that, Devon was here. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're gonna try this new joke. Um, I think scout leaders are super underrated. Super underrated. Scream it! Oh, I think scout leaders are super underrated. Is that what you think yelling is? Yelling! I think scout leaders are super underrated. I think they should be put in the same sentence as doctors. Yes! Because it's kind of the same job. Doctors declare the time of death. Scout leaders declare the place of death. Which means, if you've gone to camp and learned how to tie a knot, the chance of you dying under a ceiling fan rises. Don't people hang themselves from ceiling fans? That, that's, is that a common thing? No! No? Fuck! Uh, too many whites, bro. Too many whites, bro. That's not true. That's not true. Now, I mean, Jacob, look at you. You're, you're small. You're tired. <laughs> but yeah, um, so like tying a knot. Tying a knot is the foundation of hanging yourself. <laughs> Whatever you're standing on when you do it is the foundation of hanging yourself. Okay, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, was that a joke? Uh, I just wrote ceiling fan. Wait, 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 let me see your war face. Scream! Watch! That was weak. Nobody, nobody even flinched. <laughs> um, so I picked Ali, guys. And I'm not talking about high school. I picked in kindergarten. I used to be tall and skinny as a kid. And being tall and skinny as a kid is cool as shit. Being tall and skinny now sucks. I look like a child. I am the same size. It's like I got my driving license, drove up to a toll, and instead of saying easy pass, it said puberty, and I had no change. Yeah, it's too long, but eh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, but like, being skinny sucks. This shit sucks. Um, kid, kids could jump me because I look like I'm the same age as them, and adults could jump me because I look like I'm the same age as their kid. You don't understand. I'm fun for the whole family. That usually works. Louis and Freddy, you motherfuckers. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, has anybody here uh, ridden on a roller coaster before? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people say roller coasters are fun. I don't think roller coasters are fun. I think people just enjoy edging deaths. <laughs> Because you know what a roller coaster is? It's, it's waiting two days to text back deaths because you don't want to seem too eager, you know? It is, it is a deadly ride. It is literally the velvet rope between you and the afterlife. And you're doing this. 
just doing this. Oh, I'm getting past the rope. You're just doing this. You're basically tickling uh, the. <laughs> oh shit, I got lighted at the punchline. You're basically tickling uh, the Grim Reaper's balls. Um, Louis, genuinely, scream as loud as you can right now. That is, this is the loudest. That's great. I mean, I just, I'm getting used to English, okay? Screaming isn't in a language. Scream no words, scream no words. Scream. Something stuck in my throat. Ah! Yeah. Ah! I mean, I'm not capable of screaming, so yes. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Alright, I'm gonna do this last one. I don't know if it works or not. I didn't even write it down, but um, well, I did write it down. It didn't work because the joke isn't true. But, uh, enough setup, nobody cares. I thought Wikipedia was uh, written by AI. Anybody think that? No. No? I'm totally dumb. It's a submitted website. It is? Yeah. That's the whole point. Oh. I thought it was like written by AI, so like I showed up on Wikipedia and they like uh, asked, they asked me for money. Like, uh, the, they asked me for money and I was like, oh my god, AI is taking jobs from homeless people. <laughs> Zip up your tents and pray, homeless people. Your future's here and the future is aggressive. <laughs> Arm your shopping carts and to retaliate. That's the end of my time. Of, uh, I should write down my jokes. What are you looking at then? <laughs> Dude, it's, my phone is literally black. I just, I need to escape from it. This has been my time. This has been amazing. I've seen only four comics. I showed up late. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. Louis Carroll, everybody. Louis Carroll. God, watching. Watching Louie yell as hard as he could was like watching Zazu teach Simba to roar. That's a great joke if you have a two-year-old. By the way, I love that Louie Carroll comes to the fattest country on earth and starts a joke with being skinny sucks. You gotta read the fat room. All right, everybody, this has been Comedy from Home Sweet Home. We are back one more time this month, and then my friend Tyler Bauer will be taking over for me as I have a child. So everybody, not me personally, but everybody, thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, you all know this because you're all performers. Uh, we're going to be hanging out on the porch having a drink or two. Thank you for coming out tonight.